Hello everyone! I am going to be painting one of the splintered fang models. One of the venom bloods. But first, I am just cleaning up my brushes before I begin. This is Vallejo Brush Cleaner. If you haven't used it before, I highly recommend it. Alright, now that my brushes are ready to go, <laughs> let's decide on a color scheme. Now, I was looking at the box, and I like a lot of what they have done here. These, uh, snake bite leather, uh, metal pieces. I think I'm going to do them differently. But I like the look of the leather and the snakes and this dark metal. Um, but I think I'm going to try copper as the lighter metal. So, silver. A dark silver with dry brushed over, dry brushed light silver over it. Um, but the more ornamental pieces, I think I'm going to try a copper rather than this uh, old gold that they're using. And when I was first looking at them, I liked the idea of doing a really pale, all of their skin really pale. But I do really like the look of um, the darker skin in comparison to the green and silver. So I think I'm going to do that instead. Yes. And the skin is the first thing that we shall do using the size brush. Model this size brush. Now, the color I'm choosing to go with, I think I'm going to do a mix of fire fl uh, fire slayer flesh and wildwood, an even mix. And just put that on all over the skin. I think that does work well. That's right, in case you haven't heard, there will be a new mic. I will sound hopefully better when the new mic arrives. Ooh, I do think that's working well. I did get the color that I wanted. That is a even mix of uh, contrast wildwood and contrast fire slayer flesh. I think it makes a nice darker skin tone. Like all of the Warcry miniatures I found, that these have a lot of nice little details on them. That does require more painting but they will look awesome when they are done. I keep switching through my, from my bigger standard brush to my smaller Vallejo Torre, number 30 uh, brush, just to evenly coat it with the bigger one. But then when I need to get to the details without splashing over to the everything else, just use the smaller brush back and forth while it's wet. I'm a uh, commissioned artist for Magic the Gathering Altars and you need to be quick on your feet with uh, getting the right brush at the right time because the, the working on such a small surface even more difficult than a miniature I think where the, it just dries so quickly need to have the right brush for the job. What does he have on his head? On one side of his head, he is clearly bald. But on the other side, 
looks like he has hair. I think he might have a mohawk hiding underneath that helmet. Neat. I think his skin came out nicely. Um, I didn't do this previously, but I will do it from now on. Uh, after I'm all done, I'll take very close, high quality snapshots and add that to the end of the film. So you can expect to see that at the end. And that will be my future way of going about it. Now, now that the skin is done, what is next? I guess his leather clothing. Which I think should be a mix of Black Templar and Dark Angel's Green. Angel's green is enough. Alright, let's see what Dark Angel's green alert is. So we've got, what do we have to paint? We've got leather to paint. Um, we've got metal of two, at least two different kinds to paint, three different kinds. Uh, we've got the uh, strappings that keep his leather together and we've got his weapons to paint now I do like how they added green of some kind to the weapons to show that it's a poisoned weapon I will definitely be doing that too all right let's try this Ready to go. Dark Angel's Green. Oh, and if you hadn't seen my other videos, these are contrast paints, but they are in Vallejo mixing bottles. Uh, because I find these just much easier to use. Yes, it does look like the uh, Dark Angel's green is enough, dark enough, for what I want. Unlike the skin, I'm doing it a bit more heavily. I'm with this bigger brush at first, but I will get to the edges with a smaller brush because I do not want this to spill over on my nicely done flesh. To answer some questions people have been asking, My accent is basically the result of moving all over Canada when I was young and then when I was a bit older, child, still a child, when I was a bit older I came to live in a Newfoundland small community that definitely has Irish background. Hello again, hopefully with some better lighting. I uh, was able to finish up the green so that you can see it and hopefully see him better now. There he is with his green and that was yes Dark Angel's green. 
Alright, take you there. There. That done. I think it's time to move on to the metal. And I'm going to go with um, let's have a look at this first. How dark is that? Mm, nice and dark. Magnesium for the initial dark metal colors. However, um, on the on this area right here. that part with that snakeskin look. Uh, that one, I'm going to go Dura Aluminum because I'm going to color over that Dura Aluminum with a, uh, a green contrast paint. And I really want it to be able to sh shine green. And I think that the magnesium, if I did it with that, Magnesium would just be a bit too dark for what I would would be hoping for, so I'm just going to do that with um, the dura aluminum, and then I'll do the rest of the metal. Um, the rest of the metal, except for the ornamental parts, uh, with the magnesium. The ornamental parts I'll be using a copper, 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 copper. copper. Where are you, copper? Copper, 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 copper. There you are. Copper. If I don't like it, copper, well then the copper is easily highlighted with gold. So I'll do that. And it'll just be a shadowy part of gold. As if I had already intended to do that all along. So right now I am just doing a thin layer of dirt aluminum to turn this into green metal. See, just put the dirt aluminum right in there. Doesn't look like much yet. Someone is mowing their lawn outside. And yes, I should definitely close the windows so that you can hear me better, but it is super hot right now. I mean, super hot for Newfoundland. All right. With this fine detail brush, I am just going over all, yes, all the metal pieces, um, except for the ones that look like, you know, they're more decoration. Those ones I'll leave for the copper. I'm also going to use that magnesium on, oh, should it be, never mind, that one's going to be copper. It's a little ring around his ankle ankle bracelet is going to be copper. Mm. And okay, his helmet is going to go magnesium. During the little metal parts of this potion of poison that he has on his person. During the in the uh, lower level parts of his belt buckle, the higher level parts are going to go with that copper. These guys, the Splendid Fang will be taking a turn in our battle reports next. I wonder how they will do. I think they're quite powerful with that double ability because it just depends on how lucky I am. I guess I'm just doing the entire weapon magnesium. I 
might not, not look like much yet, but he will. I think it's time to try his comb. I think we're going to use Warp Lightning with acrylic green. Start off with Warp Lightning. Then I think I'm going to tint it a bit blue with this acrylic green, which, you know, it says it's acrylic green, but it looks pretty blue. So, first layer will be Warp Lightning, and I just really get it in there at first. Get it in there. With all that, uh, all those indentations caused by the comb, and to just mildly but forcefully push it in there while it's still wet. Take it off of it. Ah, right. Um, with the thin it down a bit with a some contrast medium on your brush, but mostly towards the top. Nice and quickly, while it's freshly done. Okay, and then, while it's still wet, add just to the base, um, just at the base of the comb, so that it goes halfway up. Yeah, looks like I don't need that extra contrast medium. Base of the comb, so it's halfway up. I'm using this beautiful Achillean green. Starts more as a turquoise and then goes up into a uh, paler green. And I'm going to apply that the same way of sorts to this scaly skin armor. Um, the outer bit of it is going this uh, acrylian green. See, the outside square of it right there is the acrylic green, and I'll do that on the other side. And then I'm going to use the warp lightning in the middle. And because its contrast paint is so wet, um, I don't need to blend it together, the two colors. I don't need to blend the two colors together. The, uh, they'll spread out to meet each other, but on their own. Like that. And, while I still have that warp lightning, I'm going to use this Plague Bearer Flesh. This Plague Bearer Flesh is going all over Potion or poison vial. Vial of poison. It's being covered in the plague bearer flesh and then at the very top of it, while the plague bearer flesh is still wet, lightning. And this time, I will blend together a bit with my brush. Just um, touch it. Touch it, moving upward. When you have too much of that green on your brush, just take it off. You only want to move your brush upward to 
move that yellow into the green and not the green into the yellow. With the acrylic green that is still wet, acrylic green is just going to go at the very top of this, uh, this bottle, just as far as those metal pieces on the bottle are, just dabbed very lightly. And then when that's all dry, I'm going to give it a gloss varnish so it looks super shiny like it is actually in a glass bottle. There that is. poison jar. All right, now, uh, yes, okay. Next, let's add the copper. Which is Alejo Metal Color Copper. I think it might be a bit dark, but I am probably going to highlight it with some gold. Um, probably Gehenna's gold, perhaps, or Liberator gold um, from Citadel. There. Uh, yes. Taking out my Army Painter Kolinsky Masterclass. So I can uh, do. his bracelet to his ankle bracelet to his belt buckle to his armor's nipple ring to a little snake S-ish thing a little snake charm on the on his back and to the snakes on the front of his shield. Here we are. Doesn't look like much yet, but it will. I think I am going to just do Black Templar and all of those leather bands that I didn't do uh, green. I don't want them sticking out. I do want them fading into the background, so I'm going to do them black. Using my master cash. Yes, you guys. Don't worry, I will be painting up the Corvus Cabal. But my one of my patrons asked that once we get the new mic. I do the chorus cabal. The one with the great wings. Um, using that new mic, so that means I have to wait for the new mic to get in and it hasn't arrived yet. And then, then I will be doing the chorus cabal. Cabal. In the meantime, we'll just have to stick with this mic. And do up this lovely splinter thing. Reckland flesh shade and and now normally I like to use no oil gloss. But this one, I actually want the armor to look 
older, so I'm going to use just plain old Nuln Oil shade. And putting it moderately all over the weapon. Now I'm going to put Nuln Oil all over the helmet. All over that one leg armor. All over the edges of the steel. Uh, where I put all the magnesium. I'm keeping it off where I put the other two metals. The dura aluminum and the copper is not being covered with non oil. Okay. Now, taking out my very fine brush, I'm also going to be doing non oil over the edges of the snake skin. Only the edge where I added the uh, magnesium, not over my beautifully done snakeskin. The first layer, so that's fine. We'll add some depth. Now, I'm going to close that up. And over all the copper, I'm using a Reckland Flesh Shade. And I'm not particularly concerned if I get the Reckon Flesh Shade on his skin around it, because that just gives a bit of shadow with the right tone to where the uh, braces are resting on his skin. I don't mind that at all. And then also on the little snake on his bum. And also going to see that lovely design. Well, all of that, including the area that is covered in Durlum, is just going over with um, the Reckland Flesh Shade. Because I don't mind the Duraluminum turning a bit brownish. Uh, because this is old. So I'm going to keep uh, the uh, fangs themselves super shiny. Is another contrast paint skeleton hoard. They are just going on. Yeah, that's enough right there. They are just going on little, little tiny fangs sticking out of his armor. Not being too particularly careful. The skeleton hoard is light enough that if I get it on his armor, it doesn't particularly matter. You can't really tell. If you can tell, just, you know, a little bit dirtier, but you can't tell, so I'm not concerned about it getting on his armor or not. Now, now it is time for dry brushing. I absolutely should be using a small dry brush, but it seems I've forgotten to pick one up. And I want to get this painted now, so I'm going to be daring and use a medium dry brush for it. An old one at that. Um, and I might use this one too, very gingerly. This one is a uh, small base brush. Not ideal, but I have confidence in myself. I'm going to use Rune Fang Steel. Having a little on the brush, 
putting it down for use later, rubbing it off, and going to it. Do this in multiple stages. Layer upon layer of dry brushing. Be patient and work up to the to what you want. It won't come all at once. Particularly if you're using a brush that is too big. I'm dry brushing all of the front of the shield uh, with the Rune Fane's deal. Um, but we'll go back over the, uh, the copper part with this Gehenna's Gold. That little bit that is hanging down, the back of it is currently wreath bone. I'm just going to quickly do that Dark Angel's Green. Then I will show you what my dry brushing look like. Chrome. I'm very carefully going to edge highlight the metal, all the silver metal. So, you know, on the tips of the spikes, on just scraping my brush, the side of my brush across it, making certain it isn't, there's some on my brush, but not too much. I also choose a single side of his weapon to scrape my brush all along. Just that one side. Like the light is hitting off it in that particular direction. And also scraping a little bit over each of the uh, cuts and the top of any curved areas. And I'm going to do that same edge highlighting using uh, for all of the copper using Gehenna's gold, which is a layer. I only want a little bit on my brush at the same time. Just taking it up and wiping a little bit off. Alright, that's it. Now with highlighting. his hair. There it is. Now we're on black. I think black hair was a good choice. For him anyway. All right. 
think I'm satisfied with him. Please don't mind the paint on my hands. Here he is. Just got to face him and he'd be done. I hope you enjoyed painting with me. This was Naomi with Sword and Steel. If you liked this video and like to see more like it, please like and subscribe. And let me know that you want more. See you next time.